Good morning, wrestling world, and welcome to PWR Today, this Wednesday morning, September 21st. I'm Linda Kay, joined by Matthew Thomas. Matthew, how are you this fine, lovely Wednesday morning? Hey, I'm great, and uh, if you listen to yesterday's show, it sounds like we almost went from June to September, mm-hmm. so uh, I don't know where the year has gone to, but uh, I'm doing I'm doing wonderful. I'm uh, very happy that the powers that be in WWE were listening to us yesterday and decided <laughs> to course correct and start NXT the exact same way that uh, I suggest that they do it, you know, and I'm, that's what I'm here for, Linda. I'm here for uh, inspiration. I'm here for creativity. I'm here for ideas. Uh, so you are very much so welcome, WWE and Viewing Universe. That is absolutely tremendous. So I, I feel the energy. I feel the excitement, the motivation coming from you, the mat. So Matthew, no matter how you're feeling, what should you be wearing on your body you know and that's that's the thing when i when i try to plant my uh my mental my telepathic seed like i did yesterday with the wwe uh, i'm always wearing my collar and elbow brand gear i found it's not only comfortable and fashionable i feel like it actually kind of helps with those telekinetic uh you know capabilities as well there too Uh, i might even try like some remote viewing with it where i can kind of see if i can see what's going on in like other areas of the world or in other galaxies and whatnot but um you know collar and elbow brand.com Promo code Linda K saves you 10%. And like I said, it's not only fashionable and comfortable. I mean, I think it does improve my, uh, you know, the performance of my ESP. Oh, well, you know what else can help your performance uh, physically and also mentally, just your performance overall as a whole. And that would be being covered by our friends at ProWrestlingInsurance.com. And that is supplemental coverage that anybody, not just an actual performer, but just anybody, not even in pro wrestling, can have that additional coverage to make sure you are safe and covered 24-7. ProWrestlingInsurance.com. Great partners there as well as at Collar and Elbow. Now, Matthew, yesterday I was listening to you and Meathead. Um, the big news of the week um, to me was the War Games announcement at Survivor Series. I think that's going to be a huge addition to this year's uh final of the big four uh pay-per-views so excited for that you know i really grown to love that even more and more just more recently uh with seeing that at nxt and just um i'm sure that's been an introduction to uh many people who didn't quite capture war games um from the, the previous decades however i learned a lot more about the whole white rabbit um stipulation speculation if you will um gosh you know like why whether it be Bray Wyatt, whether it could be Adam Rose, in reference to what we saw during Raw last night, I thought of another hypothesis or another uh, educated guess. Oh my my goodness! Well, I mean, I think I thought Meathead and I just absolutely exhausted all the possibilities of who could premiere, uh, you know, who this could be a sign for. Um, so I, I have no idea. I, I, you know, I, maybe it's because I implanted those ideas in the WWE or, you know, the remote viewing that I attempted. I have no idea, Linda, who else could it possibly be? Well, not Karrion Cross. I know you had mentioned that he was previously known as white rabbit, but do you remember when we saw a ton of white bunnies hopping around at WrestleMania not too long ago. Bad bunny. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's right there in front of us the entire time. Uh, somebody who literally has the name of a, uh, a rabbit in his, in his name. And Linda, last week we saw the premiere of, uh, we saw Logan Paul on SmackDown to set up that magic crown jewel I mean, like Bad Bunny, that's another name that you think that you could potentially have, uh, you know, at in Saudi Arabia. So who knows? Maybe maybe that's kind of what we're using SmackDown for to build towards uh, Crown Jewel. And it could very well be Bad Bunny. Uh, I mean, it's been a little while since we have seen him in a WWE ring. And that was a very it was uh, it was well received last time he was uh he was in the ring, so 
I think you very well might be uh, mm. might be onto something. Um, by you, you may have guessed it by a hair. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say uh, perhaps some interference if my guess is correct uh, or <laughs> my theory. Not uh, no pun intended there. Um, the white rabbit could interfere with that Logan Paul match with Roman Reigns. But I digress. Uh, we also found out through Meathead's investigation through the website um, affiliated with White Rabbit, um, September 23rd uh, was a date that popped up, which is this Friday. So connecting with SmackDown, perhaps. So uh, perhaps we'll see the unveiling of who White Rabbit is this Friday night. I, I'm going to I'm going to throw out an, another crazy theory. Linda, do you remember when uh, when Winnie the Pooh got stuck trying to get to Rabbit's house? Um, was this something on WWE or, uh, my no, 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 actual, actual legit Winnie the Pooh. He was trying to, he ate so much honey. Wait, wait a minute. I, I think he was trying to get to Rabbit's house. I don't, maybe he got stuck in his own, in his own house. But anyway, I think Rabbit was involved. I think he was trying to get to Rabbit's house. So maybe, maybe this is a long, long, uh, slow burn to let us know that some wrestler in WWE is going to get stuck and that's going to be a big thing like for uh, like weeks on end on smackdown is this person stuck and they're trying to get him out of wherever uh this this said person gets stuck at all right uh throwing in another one into the the, the hat there thank you matthew thomas for for that additional uh uh guess yeah, that one that one's out there. That one's out there. But because I want to guess it and because I want to get it right, and I feel a little bit jealous that you went a completely different route that makes a ton of sense. So I wanted to put my completely out of left field speculation out there. Why not? All righty. Well, why not make those guesses just because we saw what you predicted come true on NXT last night when NXT kicked off with a, uh, a conference, so to speak, where uh, both Carmelo Hayes and Sola Sokoa were, I don't want to say summoned, we didn't see what exactly happened, maybe they were emailed, maybe uh, they <laughs> received a text, maybe they received a, a page uh, to come and see none other than Shawn Michaels, who spoke NXT off the air last week as we saw the changing of the colors. You predicted it, it happened. It kicked off with a surprising move, um, especially since we just saw Solo Sokoa on SmackDown defending that title on SmackDown and him being a title holder with the already packed, stacked gold within the bloodline. Um, Shawn Michaels explained that Solo wasn't, I, I don't know if I have the wording correct here, but not the technical person that the fans voted in to face Carmelo Hayes for the title. North American title, and he had to give up belts. Crazy. And Carmelo thought it was just going to be headed right back to him. However, no. John Michaels informs us that in six weeks at Halloween Havoc, there will be a five-man ladder match for the North American title, uh, which will begin with a, a tournament for um, some contestants for that ladder match. match. What did you think when you saw the whole exchanging of the belts and or returning i should say of the north american title it felt like a reset and one of the higher acclaimed areas of nxt's history is the era where w william regal was the authority figure and it was such a good job done by nxt because you had a, an objective neutral authority figure it was not the authority it was not mr mcmahon it was not some authority figure that the baby faces have to persevere against it was an authority figure that called it down the middle that's what i'm hoping this will be and i think that Shawn michaels of all people has so much equity in the WWE universe that you will have people that make it a habit to tune in weekly to see Shawn Michaels as an authority figure. I hope this continues. Um, this was a pre-tape. I really think you can uh, gain something special uh, by having Shawn Michaels appear uh, every ever so often. I know it's probably something they don't want to overuse because I think – a Shawn Michaels pop in the NXT zone, if you will, will probably out pop any other pop. And I think they're probably very aware of that. And 
there's probably some concern there by making him appear, uh, you know, very often actual live in person. But my goodness, I think it's a step in the right direction. And it felt like a reset there. Um, you know, it felt like uh, kind of NXT 2.0 is gone and we are really kind of setting up for, uh, you know, not I thought maybe it was going to go kind of a, a tournament route to really make sure uh, the matches, the matches mattered week to week. Interesting. They're going this direction, though. I kind of was thinking we were going to see that as a belt that could go back and forth between brands. But the way it sounds, Solo is, uh, you know, on SmackDown for the time being. He is part of the bloodline. And, um, you know, I can definitely see that making a, a ton of sense as well. And I think that that was a very good swan song for, for Solo to win a title and to quintessentially uh, never be beat. And he is in a heel stable. So that is something that he can make sure people know that he was uh, he was never beaten for that title. Like Bob Backlund all those years ago, uh-huh. Solo can uh, make sure people know that he never lost that North American title. And uh, yeah, I, I think it was a good start to the show. All right. And he did confirm it with Carmella right there that he did get next. So next we get the best or a best of three match match number two between our mathematician super friend uh, Axiom and Nathan Fraser, now the two of them. I mean, I, I, I think it might have been Wade Barrett that said, I'm getting exhausted just watching the two of them. I mean, incredible high-flying action. Uh, we find out in the end, it's now tied one-to-one. We are going to get the deciding match coming up. But, uh, man, Axiom and Nathan Fraser is just showing friendship, taking it to another level. I mean, literally. I mean, what are your thoughts on just this? I don't want to say feud because they're friends, yeah. but this um, best of three, I should say. Uh, so a couple of things here. Um, you know, first of all, I was a little bit, I, I can't say surprised. you got to go back to, this was on my, my uh, cable provider last night called this NXT. Uh, there was no mention on my cable provider's, program guide or there of NXT 2.0. So I think we are officially back to NXT. I thought there may be a slight change to the color scheme. We're still the, uh, you know, bright and colorful, which, you know, I, I don't necessarily mind. Uh, and what it really, it actually to me looked a lot more. Um, I don't know. I liked it better simply because same color scheme, but NXT, not the 2.0 thing. I never really thought that made a ton of sense. So, you know, I'll start there. Uh, it is, I thought it was a good match. Um, I, When I think of best out of three or five or seven, I, I, this felt like it it came up pretty quick. I know we, we had the first match a couple of weeks ago. To me, it did not seem like either either superstar is established enough to have a – you know, series of matches like this. Normally, you know, this comes when, you know, there's a couple of tight matches. I think back to what was it, Sheamus and Cesaro back right before they formed the bar. I normally Mm -hmm. associate it with more established talents, but, you know, hey, I mean, it is, maybe this is their way to establish these talents. And I think it was, uh, you know, fairly easy to see this was going to go Fraser's way. And I'm just hoping the next one we have, the tiebreaker, it's a draw. So we have... (laughs) <laughs> that they they have to put their heads together and Axiom can really utilize his math skills because I think in a, a series of matches like this or maybe maybe it just keeps going to a draw Linda and we have to get into more and more complex equations like we can't come this far and not have some convoluted math thing happen here exactly uh, one thing I want to just mention about the color scheme stuff I, I noticed that. In all the graphics, it was black and gold, but um, interior-wise, all the bright colors, I feel that it may just be a gradual change, and then maybe the complete unveiling at either a takeover or maybe a a special, you know, maybe Halloween Havoc, I don't know, uh, but I just feel that when it's going to be that huge event, maybe that we'll see Shawn Michaels actually out 
into the arena, maybe Triple H out into the arena. Um, but definitely something to look forward to um, as well as um, some more. You, you know, you know, you know what, Linda, I just want to add, if you really wanted to go all out for a transformation back to black and gold, you call up Tony Khan and you get a one night only appearance from one gold dust. And you have like he's the one who does it because that's black and gold. It's what you think of. You think of that is gold dust colors. I would love that because he was that's one of my exa- favorites. That's exactly what you do. Absolutely. Uh, so we get an explanation from Damon Kemp on how it all came about when he turned on his brothers. Well, you know, his diamond mine brothers, not not the actual Creed brothers turning on each other. But um, we found out that there was security footage that Tony D'Angelo and Stax had offered Roderick Strong some money. Uh, I don't know if it was to work a hit or a way to help join or help win the um, to help Tony and Stax win that um, tag team championship uh, a few weeks back. But Roddy wouldn't take the money, but Damon Kemp did. So we found out that apparently Roderick Strong had the security footage, but Damon kept knowing it could out him. Then he later, quote, destroyed Roddy, as we saw uh, last week. And that's how it all came about. So now he's demanding a one-on-one match with one Creed brother and then possibly the other. I just know he just said one in the ring, one in the locker room. But uh, we didn't get that last night at NXT, but um, I don't know if it's announced for next week, but I foresee that happening, and it's going to be Brutus, I believe, uh, Creed, who will be getting his hands on Damon Kemp after the turn. Interesting. I'm just, where my head goes to in all this is I wonder where Roderick Strong comes out at. You know, I wonder if this was a way to write him off. Like, are we going to see him, especially with Triple H, uh, you know, in charge now are we going to see him on the main roster sooner rather than later we've been talking about that forever i said uh last week i was never going to mention that again with mandy i've probably gotten as close to the same amount of times with roderick strong but um it just kind of kind of makes you wonder absolutely uh next we get some tag matches here uh we had one um ivy nile showing her disgust for what happened with david kemp her tagging with Tatum Paxley facing Toxic Attraction. Toxic Attraction getting the win. Perhaps some more momentum uh, back going to Toxic Attraction. And then we also had a tag match between uh, the Dyad coming out. Uh, Schism as a whole against Anofe and Blade. A great match between the two. But we end up uh, with a victory for the Dyad. And uh, we'll later have reference to them um, later on in nxt uh but we also get a promo um roxanne perez looks like it's gonna be something coming up it, it, it was a promo a challenge with cora jade saying that she'll be facing a tougher rougher more determined roxanne perez um i know the next big televised special is halloween havoc but i'm thinking something between the two of them uh, coming up sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, but we also then had Corey Jade come out facing Wendy Chu. Corey Jade with the win. However, Lash Legend attacking Wendy Chu. So there we go. Another feud um, coming about from NXT last night. And then we had a backstage interview or one-on-one um, interview, I should say, with Mackenzie Mitchell and the NXT champion, Braun Breaker. Um, just giving his thoughts about the main event from NXT last night, the number one's contender in the match. Um, before I jump ahead into that final match, uh, do you have a, um, before, I mean, you saw what happened, were you hoping perhaps we would get the Braun Breaker and Tyler Bate rematch or another rematch, but between Braun Breaker and JD McDonough before, before that was, was yeah, that and the weird thing, the, the weird thing, Linda, this was a tough to call because they are both. They are are both rematches that we've seen, you know, not too long ago. I was I was a little more interested in seeing him rematch against McDonough because I thought that McDonough might have the off chance of taking the title from him the first time they met. And, you know, now I look at it, I'm like, I'm wondering if they have just wanted to give the NXT uh, universe a little bit of time to get. Uh, you know, associated and to get to know J.D. McDonough and his uh, enjoyment of pain and that character that they're trying to really 
uh, develop. So McDonough uh, was kind of what I was what I was hoping for there. Well, you know, you've been so great on your predictions. Uh, we later find out that that might have been true. Well, before we get to that main event, though, we did have a uh, match for I don't want to say number one contenders. But it was a match to be in the North American Championship ladder match at Halloween Havoc between uh, Oro Menza, his debut there on NXT proper versus Grayson Waller. Uh, you know, I went into this match thinking Grayson Waller would come up with that win. However, we saw Apollo Crews make an appearance with a bloody eyeball. Okay, I think that, you know, last week we saw it, maybe it was two weeks ago, um, the, the bloody eye. Man, I feel for that. I feel for him. But we saw him out there with it dripping out you know i know uh we've had a lot of different eye stipulations in the past or maybe yes. not a lot but a few kind of get wrapped me a flashback to that but however uh due to um he didn't still interfere i mean slightly he appeared it got grayson waller uh distracted and surprised we have oro menzo uh or sorry oro menza with the victory on his debut match on nxt so yeah uh, this was a surprise that, it was yeah, yeah. It was an upset, and hey, we're going to get to see him in a, uh, you know, in a ladder match. Absolutely. Another fun match, um, Carmelo Hayes facing, and Trick Williams, excuse me, facing um, the oh, Chase U coming out. We got Andre Chase, Bodie Hayward, and Thea Hale. Um, another surprise there, Andre Chase giving a teachable moment to Carmelo Hayes with that victory. Uh Favorite thing here, and I'm becoming a fan of this when he's saying, give me a C, give me H-A-S-C, what does that spell? Chase you. So I, I, I'm I liking that they're giving more light here on Andre Chase. And again, it's a surprise win. Carmelo Hayes? Yeah, no, no. Ch- Andre Chase pinning Carmelo Hayes was a surprise here. So happy to see it. So happy to see Andre Chase getting a very decisive victory. This is probably the biggest, as far as I know, the biggest win for Andre Chase on uh, on NXT. So, um, you know, maybe with uh, things kind of resetting a little bit, maybe this is the uh, this is the the ascension of Andre Chase and just so cool the whole celebration. But you uh, mentioned that, the ascension. Are they going to be returning oh, to NXT? Maybe so with a w- little white rabbit. <laughs> uh, next, I, I have to bring this up just because uh, it was Gallus in the back playing darts there are playing cards out there and it basically brought up a match for next week between brooks and jensen and gallus however with the playing cards here were you thinking duke hudson was gonna come out of nowhere (laughs) i was thinking that i was thinking that so as much as i didn't really enjoy it at the time i wouldn't mind if duke just uh got back to gaming again yeah yeah it'd be nice for a return for duke hudson uh we then had a match two big men there sangha and Von Wagner, Von Wagner getting the win, uh, just showing, I mean, how much power, I mean, literally picking up Sangha, the size of Sangha, and getting that victory. But um, we also then learn of a match set for next week. Uh, first of all, we find out that Wesley is fine and will be cleared to compete um, in that match to see who will be another um, contender in the five-man ladder match for the uh, North American title at Halloween Havoc next week. It will be Wesley versus Tony D'Angelo. So that should be a huge match um, to, uh, for next week. And then uh, we also have a Cameron Grimes promo, uh, just talking about the schism and what he wants to do to them. And we then find out the match is set for next week. Cameron Grimes versus Joe Gacy. Um, this is one I want to see continue. I hope, I mean, I'll say I hope, but um, perhaps there might be some interference. I want this to go all the way to Halloween Havoc. If they can stretch that out for six weeks, yeah. um, that'd be something cool to see. And then finally, our main event, we had the a number one contenders match for the NXT Championship uh, between Tyler Bate and J.D. McConaughey, Dick Dunn, excuse me, as we mentioned before, uh, we have Ron Breaker there at ringside. I mean, talk about another tremendous match. I mean, as mentioned, the, the two of them are familiar um, with their matches at NXT UK. I mean, this could be a match. I mean, if if one of them happens to be the NXT champion in the future, I'd like to see a rematch on 
NXT America, so to speak, um, between the two of them. Because yeah. what, I mean, I, I seriously, it, it was a great match, a pay-per-view worthy match uh, between Tyler Bate and Janie McDonough. But Janie McDonough getting the win on Tyler Bate. So that is who will be facing Braun Breaker for the NXT Championship. Yeah, and I don't know if you're that far off from us getting this rematch. I just, I feel like with so uh, many of the NXT UK talent uh, right now that we're seeing at the top of the card, I, Breaker's had a nice reign. And I, I think with there being a little bit of a reset on NXT, I mean, Breaker to me feels like quintessentially what NXT 2.0 was made for. We had him in the very first opening segment of NXT 2.0, and it was not very long at all before we saw him with the title. I just wonder if, you know, we're potentially going in a different direction in the near future. And, and you're right, the, the fact that there is a whole section of uh, of WWE viewers that are not familiar with these NXT UK talents, and I'm one of them. And, uh, yeah, I know you've gotten a lot of this stuff on NXT UK, but I, I think that... I think you really have a chance for NXT to potentially, uh, you know, go back to being that. And it's it's hard to say because it used to be the wrestling program. But I mean, how much quality wrestling we're seeing on the main roster now? You know, I don't even know if you could say it could be the wrestling program now with the caliber of matches we're getting week to week. But, uh, you know, I think there is, uh, you know, there is definitely the possibility of the lane of NXT really being utilized uh, to showcase some of these European talents that a lot of the more mainstream WWE viewers are not accustomed to. Great points all around. And then we get a surprise at the very, very end, Matthew. We have Ilya Dragunov showing up on NXT. I was going to say 2.0, but it's not. It's NXT. So... He goes into the ring. I mean, our, this looks like, or I'm smelling a triple threat here. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, just another surprise. So just like in SmackDown and Raw within the, the Triple H regime of late, we're getting some surprises. Um, do we call this a, the, the Shawn Michael, the HBK regime? So we got the Triple H HBK regime of NXT. Or, or at that or point, Linda, are we just in the DX regime at this point? Ah, yes. Well, Road Dogg have... is back, right? Didn't Road Dogg get yeah, re-signed? Yeah, Road Dogg is back as well. Uh, um, you know, working um, some behind the scenes there. So, um, yes, very close to getting DX um appearing on both brands wouldn't that be great absolutely <laughs> well i believe that was this would wrap it up matthew for nxt last night looking forward uh to tomorrow morning where i'll actually i will be on a thursday morning once every uh so often it will take place tomorrow yeah. i'll be talking grand slam with me tomorrow morning and then i do believe you'll be back uh, Thursday morning to help end the week on wrap up the week, I should say, on the week's biggest stories and programming. So for Matthew Thomas, I'm Linda Kay. Make sure to tune in tomorrow morning here on PWR Today.